so the uh, last video that I uploaded was around July or I'm sorry around June 23rd and um, I hadn't actually seen the um, the ENT surgeon um, at UC Barrett Cancer Center and uh, I saw him on July 1st his name is Dr. Patil and uh, seems like a really great guy there's a whole lot of people that are going to be on your cancer treatment team and I've got to meet many people many individuals a whole team of people um, they have a what they call a patient navigator which is a person assigned to each patient that guides them through this whole process of treatment and questions and makes things happen kind of behind the scenes so you don't really have to worry about anything um there uh the first visit of dr patil was to get some more tests done and you're going to find out that over the next few weeks there are going to be a lot of tests and because my last video was june 23rd i'm going to take you from july 1st at uc cancer center to the current date august 6th in this one video which might be longer than the others but i kind of want to like get everybody up to speed because originally I wasn't planning on telling anybody and I had pre-scheduled all these videos for a year in advance but because of all the questions coming in because of the last couple of videos that I uploaded prior to these cancer videos um, where people started to notice that my neck is has a huge knot on it so that's kind of why I decided to do these videos now uh, my my joke of in the future of posting videos potentially after I died is pretty slim or not going to happen because um, the chance of me dying is, uh, I've just decided it's not going to happen. So that, that's the way it's going to be. And uh, so anyways, so Dr. Patil first scheduled a what's called a PET scan. A PET scan is basically from your head to your knees CT scan. They use a dye that interacts with protein and will then tell you all the places that you have cancer in your body. And I also had to do a COVID test on July 7th. That's So July 7th was when the PET scan was done. And I also had to do a COVID test on July 7th because I had to have surgery on July 10th. And with, right now with coronavirus, if you have to go to the hospital for anything that requires surgery... Whether it's inpatient or outpatient, you're going to have to be required to get a COVID test. And let me tell you about the COVID test because I've seen a lot of crap online about it that's totally false. Um, the first time I got a COVID test, which was July 7th, I remained in my vehicle. I pulled up to a nurse. She told me what she was going to do. She takes a Q-tip that's about seven miles long and she shoves all but about two inches of it up your nose. Um, it doesn't hurt. And it doesn't really feel uncomfortable until she pulls it out and then your eyes water for about three seconds and that's the end of the COVID test. You're done. Complete. <laughs> there was no pain. There's a, just a little bit of like a burning sensation when they pull it out that makes your eyes water for just a few seconds. And that's all there is to it. Um, so all the misinformation out there on the COVID test hurting and being unbearable pain is um, bullcrap. So July 7th comes around, I do the PET scan, and of course there's a delay that it takes for you to get the results. Um, I did the COVID test on July 7th, and then I went in for a more invasive biopsy on July 10th. When they did the first biopsy, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, they did it on this growth on the side of my neck. The first biopsy that was done at Metaview Regional Hospital in Maysville, and then at UC Barrett Cancer Center, they did an actual biopsy on my tonsil. The biopsy on my tonsil was more invasive. You have to be under anesthesia and all that fun stuff. So then on July 15th, I had another appointment with Dr. Patil. He told me that surgery was basically out of the question because of the location of the cancer. He told me the only places that cancer showed up in the PET scan was in my tonsils and lymph nodes and throat area um, so cancer as far as like where I thought that it was in my shoulder or bone marrow 
doesn't exist. Um, because of that, and because of how healthy I am, and the fact that, you know, I'm relatively fit, you know, I do work out, I do try to stay fit, I do try to eat healthy, uh, he gave me basically a 90% survival rate. Now, um, the only way to treat this without the surgery is chemo and radiation, and he referred me then to uh, radiation oncologist and um, I, I don't know what the person that does the chemotherapy is that also part of radiation oncology either way I had two different appointments the following week July 21st I saw the person that would do the chemo they kind of explained the procedure they they told me to ex what to expect which I'm going to go over here in a minute on July 23rd, I then saw the radiation oncologist who also explained the procedure and told me what to expect and also made another appointment where you have this mask uh, that they fit over your face. And I'll go more over that too because I have a very unique name for it that everybody at the hospital thinks is funny. Um, so the treatment basically is going to be seven weeks of radiation, Monday through Friday, and while that's happening you also get three treatments of chemotherapy on week one week four and week seven i've been told that this is a very tough treatment and that uh and that uh it, it was going to be uh, very very hard on my body and that uh, i basically needed to prepare myself for this um i was given an option to do a trial treatment um, and the trial treatment was 52 weeks of a, a different treatment that is supposed to be less severe on the body. Um, but there were what I thought was more severe side effects. And the side effects are not only does the treatment last longer, but they don't really know the side effects because everybody reacts differently to this trial treatment. Um, the largest and most concerning side effect according to the doctors were that you could have an autoimmune response to this trial and the body would basically attack itself now there were ways that they said they could treat that you would basically take a steroid injections to disable the autoimmune response but you basically were going to have to be on your toes about any little change in your body that could signal and autoimmune response was about to happen and I was gonna to have to do that for a year and because I kind of want this to be done and over with I went with the regular chemo and radiation treatment and there's also another reason also is that if you get accepted into the trial you could either get the trial 52 week treatment or you could get the placebo which is just a normal chemo and radiation treatment so I was like you know I just want it to be over with I'm gonna do the seven week plan get me back to normal so I can get back to being me done 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 all right so um, another thing I, I forgot to cover when I was speaking with dr. Patil dr. Patil told me that um, that 20% survival rate that I read online is kind of like a baseline what they tell people um, they're always going to tell you the worst so most of the time they're going to always tell you the worst so they're telling me the absolute worst that can happen for the treatment and the absolute worst that can happen for the prognosis is the 20 percent survival rate now there's some things that go along with that that um that i kind of interpreted through the conversation with dr patil and also what i read online that 20 percent survival rate is also because um a lot of the people that get this cancer are generally in their 60s and 70s and already in poor health so I'm not in my 60s and 70s and I'm not in poor health therefore that makes my survival rate much higher uh, 90% uh, is the survival rate I was actually given um, now when you do the radiation you have to uh, be fitted for a mask and I kind of call it like the 50 shades of cancer mask you I'm kind of getting ahead of myself actually let me back up so with the 
chemo and radiation, you have to have a whole series of additional tests done. They're basically baseline tests. So after my July 21st and 23rd um, appointments with the chemotherapist and the person that's going to do the radiation oncology, I had to have a hearing test that was done on July 27th. That sets the baseline for my hearing. Um, and then on July 30th, I had to have a swallowing test where they, they basically measure your curtain ability to swallow and they give you some exercises because of how the radiation does to the body. So um, all that stuff was done. Again, the hearing test was July 27th. July 30th was a swallowing test. Hold on, I have a phone call. And of course the video started over. So that was actually UC Health calling me to let me know that I needed to call the dental surgeon to make the appointment. They have some questions to ask. But um, anyways, back to what I was talking about. July 27th I had the hearing test. July 30th I had the swelling test. And also on July 30th is where I had my 50 shades of cancer mask fitted for the radiation. So what you do is you go to the radiation department. They issue you a parking pass and an ID badge. The, and the parking pass allows you to park literally at the side door of the building. So you, you walk in the side door of the building. And you're literally right where you need to be. And you pick up a like um, locker number. You go into a fitting room. You change into your gown. You put your personal belongings in a locker. You go in to have your radiation done. That's the normal process. This first time though that you go there. They are basically going to fit you with a mask. And what they do is they have you lay on the table. They kind of adjust your body. Um, this mask is basically a piece of plastic that is stuck in an oven for a certain period of time. And it gets hot. And then they lay it over your face and kind of stretch it around so that it conforms to like your body shape. From about your midline, say from your nipples up. And then you get one of these cool tattoos to help them align it when you go back in the future. So that's your 50 shades of uh, cancer mask that I call it. The people in the radiology department got a kick out of that. I've made a joke every appointment I've ever had, including the lady at the first COVID test where she says, I'm going to have to stick this way up in there, and I told her not to be using her lines against me, my lines against me, and literally she started busting up laughing. So, you know, you, your best, they tell you all along that it's better if you can remain optimistic and cheerful, and therefore my optimistic and cheerful is telling jokes every visit every time all right so after the mass fitting august 3rd i go back for my next covid test because that means i'm about to have surgery again and i also had a dental appointment appointment now one thing they tell you at the radiation meeting um with the doctor is that you have to have all future dental work done before you have radiation all future dental work all future dental work listen to that very closely you have to have all future dental work done before you have radiation of your neck area the reason being is because radiation destroys cells it causes the bones to shrink all kinds of other things there's actually a disease you can get. Let's say you get radiation. You still have all your teeth. Some 10 years down the road, you're in a car accident. You got to have a tooth pulled. Pretty good chance you're going to die from that. Um, I don't remember the word. Some big, long, technical, medical term. Mm, basically, it would be septic. like Dental septic. Type dental septic and it'll come up with some word, I'm sure. Um, so anyways, what does that mean? Well, that means I have to have every one of my teeth pulled before I can start radiation. Um, my teeth... I don't even care at this point, right? The, the, 
my concern is to get the radiation and the chemo started. I will deal with everything else after the fact, right? Pull them out. I don't care. So that phone call I just got, though, was the hospital calling me because we just found this out. Today is um, August 6th, and we just found this out August 3rd that all my teeth have to come out. So now is this sudden urgency to get me into an oral surgeon to yank all my teeth out. Um, and that's going to happen very quick. She said within about two days, i got to call them as soon as I'm done with this video, so I'm going to rush it. All right. August 5th, I had my chemo port put in. The chemo port is something that's put into your chest. It's actually under the skin. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's covered with a bandage right now. That's your chemo port. This part down here is the chemo port. Up here is where they attach it to the vein. And uh, it's all under the skin. You can kind of feel the tube if you push down hard enough. This was done yesterday. Uh, it wasn't painful. You go to the hospital. They, I don't know if it's laughing gas or what they do. They put you, they, they put oxygen on your nose and she goes, it's going to make you feel pretty good. And I'm like, all right. And they also put something in your IV to relax you. And like 10 minutes later, the nurse is like, are you feeling the effects of the drugs yet? And I'm like, no. So I hear the doctor call out. At first they did a half of a, I don't know if it's a milliliter, whatever, whatever the value that they started with was one half. And then the second one was, okay, go ahead and do one and a half. So they did that one. And 10 minutes later, they are like, do you still feel the, do you feel the effects of the drugs yet? And I'm like, no. So they did another half. And then I remember like I could hear them talking, but I didn't really like care what they were talking about. So I guess that was kind of like the effects of the drug. But literally the whole time they're doing this surgery, you can hear them talking. You got your eyes open and everything like it didn't hurt at all zero zip i remember like i caught myself like you know how like when you are first starting to doze off and you like do that like real light snore like <clears throat> and you like catch yourself i caught myself doing that a couple times i don't think that i was ever out entirely but i was almost about to fall asleep so and um it didn't hurt it, it, there's i'll tell you what hurt the worst after it was done was on the ride home you know, my driveway is a mile long and in a pickup truck. It actually hurt to hold my head still. And, and kind of today too. And she said they had to cut into the muscle. So I assume that muscle has something to do with like keeping your head still. Like straight and level. Um, because even like where they put the incision at, it's not really sore. I mean, it's a little tender, but it's not like a pain. They don't give you any type of like pain pills for like after treatment, but I haven't needed any. The The thing that's hurt the most is um, keeping my head like it wants to, it's just heavy and it's putting strain on that muscle and then that makes the muscle hurt. So that's the way that goes. All right. So then today, August 6th, I've already gotten two calls from Barrett Cancer Center. One was from Dr. Medic. Dr. Medic was telling me what the dentist already told me that all my teeth had to come out and she's basically saying that all of the chemo and radiation that was scheduled for next week now has to be postponed until that dental work's done. From the time the dental work is done, she'll wait about 10 days for me to heal before she starts the chemo and radiation. And then the second call was while I was recording this video was actually my um, patient. Uh, navigator calling to let me know I needed to call this number to schedule my appointment to have my teeth pulled she says it's probably going to happen within two days so let me get off here this brings you to current the reason why I'm doing this like this the way I just did is because I just posted those other videos and I know everybody's going to have seven million questions so what I'm really trying to get at is it is cancer I am going to have to do seven weeks of intensive radiation and chemotherapy, but my prognosis is 90% based on my age, my health, and uh, just the fact that I'm going to kick this cancer's ass. So uh, that's where we're at, and uh, I'm doing this by video also because I don't really feel like talking about this. So uh, the other thing is, too, 
I do not want a single person, not one, to feel sorry for me. I don't want anybody to sympathize. I am still me. I'm going to kick his cancer's butt. You have no reason to worry because I'm not worried. So that's kind of like my final message. My nose is itching. And uh, I'll update you along the way. So till next time.